Hi, I'm Sarah Shuey. I'm an event producer and founder of a technology company called Happily, which helps anybody recruit and hire some of the best um, independent event management specialists in the country. At my best, I'm an entrepreneur. And at my worst, I'd say that I'm a boss. Because you see, to me, the boss is dead. A boss symbolizes this power construct in the workplace that chooses hierarchy over alignment in order to achieve results. In this hierarchical structure, it's very easy for both the worker and the customer to be neglected. However, in an entrepreneurial space, the customer lives at the center of the work environment. And here in the entrepreneurial space, a team member is five times more likely to stay because they feel aligned with their purpose of work. The boss thrives in the nine to five work environment. She's masterful in rhythm, delegates tasks, motivates the team. She makes sure those TPS reports are turned in on time. But then in the nine to five workplace, no matter how fancy your office is, This is still an antiquated relic of the second industrial revolution, when men, women, and unfortunately children, averaged 100-hour work weeks. This is a photo here of some of the shiros and labor unions striking for the 9 to 5. Nowadays, with technology and women in the workplace, work-life balance has become a priority. Those people in fancy offices 80% say that they would take a job with flexible work options over one without any day. And companies are responding. In fact, most U.S. companies now offer flexible work. And more than 60% of all companies are hiring freelancers. Taking it a step further, over a third of working Americans are freelancing. And it's not just popular with millennials who make up 40% of the gig economy. It's really popular with boomers, too. Freelancers who do it just as a side hustle from their nine to fives report back that over 40% of their annual take home income is coming from gig work. 61% of the people who are freelancing are doing it by choice, not because they can't find a job. And the majority say that they're never going to go back to a nine to five again. In this do what you love era where everyone is a boss, the boss is what? The boss is dead. Look, even the robots are becoming their own boss thanks to AI. So how are we going to get things done without a boss? Well, we're all going to channel our inner Oprahs and become entrepreneurs. Whether you're an entrepreneurial full-time employee, a freelancer, or even a robot, your capacity to find purpose and alignment with others in what you do is going to categorically determine your ability to thrive as a leader in the modern workplace. So how are ways that we can lead like an entrepreneur? First of all, entrepreneurs are driven by opportunity. We're constantly looking to discover or create new opportunities to solve real problems with unique solutions. Nurturing a work environment where new ideas are celebrated, helping your teammates identify opportunities, and learn how to actually leverage those, these are both wonderful and profitable ways to lead like an entrepreneur. Remember when I mentioned that people are five times more likely to stick with a company or a project if they're aligned with a purpose? Make sure that the purpose of your company and also the purpose of the project at the hand and also the purpose of everyone's role within that project is stated as many times as needed to make sure there's alignment. Open yourself up to the possibility that the purpose of the project and the people's roles within that project can change and actually become more vibrant as you continue to get alignment on those things. When you're an entrepreneur and jumping from one context to another, seeing opportunity everywhere, constantly negotiating purpose and alignment, super on it, focused, making a dent in this world, it's actually very easy to forget that your entrepreneurial teammates They're also living the same dream and in a totally different world, which is theirs. So clarity is absolutely essential to making sure that everyone gets on the same page to get things done. Some tips and tricks on clarity, co-create roadmaps and milestones together. For the love of all things Oprah, set agendas. 
this is my last point on clarity. My friend Ryan Merkley, the head of people for Wikipedia, massively modern organization, says, no agenda, no attenda. I love this, all of this. Providing your team with the tools to be clear about their ideas, wants, and needs is absolutely essential to leading like an entrepreneur. Removing hierarchy opens up the possibility for real cross-functional collaboration. So keep an open door policy across the board. No one needs permission to run an idea by a superior. Make sure there's an open team directory so everyone can get in touch with each other by email, phone even. Encourage one-on-one -on -one time with people across departments so that new relationships can be formed. Giving everyone the ability to act like entrepreneurs and find opportunities and solutions in unusual places is where some real magic for innovation can happen. If your type A control freaky boss alarms are going off, never fear. Entrepreneurial leadership doesn't mean we're abandoning all rules and reporting. In fact, we're probably doing a little bit more of it. Um, the cadence of status updates that I found to be the best at project managing an entrepreneurial team is weekly one-on-ones with all of my collaborators, even if it's just 15 minutes over Slack. Weekly stand-ups with departments. The whole team shows up. Monthly reports that I send out to um, all stakeholders giving a bird's eye view of what's going on. Lastly, acknowledgement. Not in the boss, hey, good work, pat you on the shoulder kind of way, but in a way that you'd acknowledge an equal. You call them out and you explain what specifically they did that helped out the rest of the team. Don't need to thank down. We're going to just lift people up with our acknowledgements. And look, entrepreneurs fail and they're never satisfied with the final outcome. We're always looking for what's next and what can be better. You know what, even just two days ago, after I finished this whole presentation about the boss is dead, I'm feeling good about myself being an entrepreneurial leader. You know, I got this email from Glenna, our incredible customer service manager, writing in response to the annual performance review notes I shared with her from the team. You know what she says? She literally calls me literally the quote unquote best boss I've ever had. <laughs> Total fail, right? So even though the notion of the boss hasn't actually died yet, I hope you'll join me in taking every opportunity that we can to lead like an entrepreneur. Thank you.